Welcome to Magical Women. I'm your host, Connie Boyd, and this is the third sequel talk with the amazing Julie Ng. Which brings me to the next part of Magic Canon, which is our, our love of magic history. Right. You know, magic history was not a big part of my upbringing, but it was very much a part of you know my time here in Toronto. So yeah. I've spent a long time working with other magicians, especially with, uh, David's also a magic historian. So mm-hmm. he introduced me to this to this world, which I'd never really understood. I mean, obviously I'm aware of it, but but to dive in and to meet these collectors, to re, to work with other historians has been such a joy. And there they're is, so passionate. I mean, there is and a do. wealth of information, yeah. a yeah. wealth of information. Like if you're looking to work on new um, techniques. So Laura London just did this brilliant um, lecture with about Talma and uh, from Survey Leroy and Bosco mm-hmm. fame. She was height of of uh, uh, um, the, the popularity. Queen of coins, no, pardon me. It was the queen of coins. I she was the queen of coins, and and there's now been a new book about another woman called um, Susie Wandes. Yes, I have her book. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, the lady with the fairy fingers. Well, yes. she was inspired by seeing you know sure. T Nelson Downs and 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 Talma, but this idea that you know there's Laura who was just. She had an opportunity to, to learn a little bit about Tama. The next thing you know, she's diving in. We're getting all this really interesting information, learning about magic, magic's history, the connections, the difficulties, the crazy chaos that goes on behind the scenes. Nothing's really changed, Connie. Are you enjoying this talk with Julie Ng? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. I have a great passion for for magic history because I think there is so much to learn. And it's good to know where you're coming from if you want to know where you're going. David Ben, who I work with, was the guest curator for the Art Gallery of Ontario's exhibition at the Magic Posters, which originally was done up at the McCord Museum in Montreal. And they have a, they had just recently amassed a huge collection of, of magic posters and they did this beautiful display at the McCord. That was in 2017. Uh-huh. And then recently it was just re-released here. But as a result, there was a very beautiful, uh, another version of a catalog that was created featuring those posters, which is just fantastic. And it's it's in the same idea and realm of the Tashin book, but this idea of so much rich history of beautiful magic posters to inspire, we can learn from. I love the Tashin book because of course it's 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 got all of the essays that come with it to give you the history along the way. Sort of like that picture encyclopedia. I'm always fond of encyclopedias. So this idea that we're learning bite-sized magic along the way. And I love this idea from Magic Canada's website to eventually become that for these bite-sized pieces for people who are interested in learning magic or seeing magic of a different kind. It's as much as we have a YouTube movement now and we have all of this, what's great, I would like to say about the the stuff that we put on is that it's curated. So we help that viewer find a path and a journey to maybe see and learn in a way that is not so daunting, it's very manageable and it inspires. And once you have a gentle path cleared for you, the world is open. Absolutely fabulous what you're doing and and what you've achieved. And really in a very short period of time, all of these programs, all of it's all been happening simultaneously. And just tell the the, the viewers um, your position. Explain to them what your position is with Magic Hand. Well, I officially have the title of executive director, but really I just sit here and I have like a thousand different hats down. <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's still my family business. <laughs> Um, I'm, I work at Magic Hanna to execute the vision and the vision is a, a multitude of, of projects and, and avenues and opportunities. So we've produced shows. We've had a lot of guest magicians come in and participate with our own show with, um, festivals that we've worked with like Luminato. It's an arts festival that runs in Toronto. So having, bringing, bringing in magicians to producing their shows to, producing our own shows and theatrical productions. David's done a lot of writing on magic history. So he's converted some of his writings into creating shows. He's worked with uh, one of our founders of Magic Canada, Patrick Watson, who is um, uh, a pivotal uh, figure in Canada in, in broadcasting and in writing. And he and David worked on the first show that I joined called The Conjure. It's a historical piece. But since then, David 
keeps writing shows, keeps performing magic. He dives into history and he finds these old gems. He, yeah. he dusts them off. He, he polishes them. He gives them a new spin. And we're, and I learned so much working with this kind of a production working. Then I also have to assist too. Like sometimes I just, I just assist. Sometimes I have to put on that hat and I get chopped into thirds and, and, you know, and, and things like that, but that's what I do. It was yeah. funny because, you know, I've, I've been with Magic Canada since 2006 officially, mm -hmm. but so I've been a part of the, my name's been a part of the, the program a lot. And uh, one of our producers, we were working with a theater company called Soul Pepper, and they, you know, they see my name as, you know, I'm executive director, so I'm writing contracts, I'm sending out this, I'm writing that, we're signing this, so administratively, right. marketing-wise, production-wise, and then one of the administrators saw me on stage with David, and David had a beautiful version of a new zigzag belt, it's really interesting, and yeah. it, was, it was, he calls it the bespoke zigzag, because it's tailored for me, and um and they, because I'm, I'm, I'm of a certain height and size, they, they really elongated it to make it really look really cool with this very interesting touch to it. But the, the, one of the administrators I've been working with for the theater company saw me on stage. She was like, so she even gets cut in half too? Is, is there nothing she can't do? <laughs> I like point of pride. I'm like, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> you see that that cape that you won, you wore as a superhero as a child. You actually have <laughs> growing into it. <laughs> I, I have to, you know, I thank my mom because, you know, she really it was the engine behind all of those, that chaos that my father, my father was like this visionary. Oh, let's have a magic shop. Let's have a bartending school. You know, let's do this theater show. Let's do. So my mom would figure out how to then execute how that was all done. She's behind the desk ordering, working with, you know, the, the orders at the shop. She's the one who's trying to, you know, organize and, and get the contract sorted out and file papers that we needed to do for my dad's bartending school. And, right. you know, it's, that's how I learned, you know, my parents were very much a team, but they, they rolled up their sleeves and they, they taught me mm -hmm. um, how to find out if I didn't know, don't be afraid to ask. And I, I really felt that that has given me the skill set for today so part of the other things that I love at Magic Hanna is our publishing wing. I have really taken to, to um, working with that area as well. So one of the things we do is we produce this, this magazine called Magical. Okay. And it's a history journal about collectors and magic history. But I get the joy of working with the contributors and then I get to work. I, I learned from Michael Albright how to, to lay out. So I was working with him and he... And he helped Tell me. viewers, wait, wait, you're being very humble. Uh, who's doing a lot of the photography? Yes. And so I, I <laughs> it's like baptism by fire, Connie. So <laughs> we, it all started with the Zero book and um, Herb, I, I met him through my, my family, but I really got to know him because David was asked to write his book. So we were very new with Magic Canna at the time. We were just sort of getting things going with Magic Canna and, um, and so we needed to take pictures of the well, you know, I, if you could just take a better picture of that, I'm like, okay, well, what about this? I mean, you know, maybe you can, do, okay. So I started taking pictures and I started taking more pictures and I started taking more pictures. And the next thing I know, you know, we, we did Herb's book, then David did his book and then Johnny did his book. And now I got the chance to work with Richard Kaufman to work on the Jennings book. It's like, I, and I have learned so much from just the lens view, you know, yeah. But I also learned a lot because in doing those books, um, David wanted to do a new book on sleight of hand. So I learned a lot about sleight of hand because I was right, like reading it with him, right? Like helping him edit it, but I was laying it out too. And in looking at the pictures, taking the pictures, seeing the struggle of getting into that crazy position and then laying that stuff out. Like I have a very interesting view of all of these things from the various hats that I had to wear to bring the book to, to fruition. And that's one of the things that I have really personally taken great joy and interest in is because that for me is the epitome of learning. You know, I, I get to place it all together. And my biggest joy was um, when Suli passed away, we were working on the Johnny Thompson book and Johnny called me right away and I hadn't even left the hospital yet. And he, uh, he said, okay, we're going to put the book on hold. And I said, no, Johnny. I said, I need to work right now. I, I don't know what I need. I, I don't know what to do. He goes, no, 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 no. I said, yes, 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 yes. So I dug in and I dove into his project 
we started working with the book so we became a new focus and project and i learned so much from that guy in in all the years i've known johnny i've known johnny a long 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 time he knew me as a child i i always used to joke that johnny knew me before i knew johnny <laughs> like like i i i think you know he i think i was like four or five years old when we first met them um, so it was like you know growing up but i really got to know him in those years of his book his book and being able to put it together, designing it, bringing it to him and getting it delivered. I don't know if you saw this picture, but we got a set of books. The, the printer said, Julie, it's done. And he snapped a picture and I took that picture and I, and I showed it to David and he was elated because it was finally done. And I phoned the printer. I said, do you think you could get that FedEx to Vegas? Oh. <laughs> And Teller got it delivered to Johnny that next morning. Happy he got a couple of showgirls to deliver it. Oh, <laughs> Literally so hot off the press. Yeah. And, yeah. and Johnny used to carry his books around like his baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's a team that makes all of this come together. It's not an individual. So I get to hung, hang out with certain people. And then I get to learn from other people. And we get those stories going. And it's like... That generosity that I received is what I would like to share with others now. I want to make sure that those opportunities are available for everybody who wants it. Yeah. So it's, it's just sense. so admirable what you're doing. And <laughs> I know that you have a love of encyclopedias, but I think you've become an encyclopedia. <laughs> And that's it. Not yet, but, but maybe one day. I'll keep reading. Oh, you're close. <laughs> I'll keep reading. <laughs> No, it's just, thank you so much for your time and for doing this today. I, I could talk to you all week. Me too. I think we, there's just such a, there's so many similarities in our journey and, and differences that I think that really help me realize that, you know, it's, it is something that we really need to speak more about, like just community and sharing. And thank you for making this channel available for people, because I think for those who want it, like you said, it's here, you know, the information's here. And I think people want to share. This is, I'm sure what you're experiencing from it, the, the yeah. experience of producing this, this program. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really happy. Did you enjoy this Magical Women Talk? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you'll be aware of future Magical Women Talks. Oh, and don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you. Yeah.